Come on over, it's time for Tim Friend. Hey, back to Tim Friend. This is not a live recording because the original audio got a little fucked up, but I'm gonna try to do it as I'm watching it. Wish me luck. You have your water and your gauze? Let's tell us what we need to know. Then I hit B. Might have skipped some text. That's okay, though. My retirement was a long time coming, and I was glad of it. I remember being pretty frustrated because I might have skipped some good dialogue, and that's I, I like this game dialogue a lot, so I was pretty bummed. But when I first laid eyes on Grey Sky, I wondered if a few more years in the field might not be so bad. Because the sky was grey. Learned about why Horus was even here in the first place. Volcanic ash from the isles drifts across the strait and gathers in the canyon, blackening the stone and blocking out the sun. Descending into that cloud, I couldn't help but feel I was stepping into the jaws of the underworld. I, think, I mean, it does look pretty hellish, those World of Warcraft-ass mountains, but also this World of Warcraft-ass transition from black mountains to grass. What was hidden beneath was nothing short of heavenly. Lush fields surrounding soil enriched with volcanic ash. Happy families relaxing in perpetual twilight. Humble cottages and sprawling woods. Bubbling streams and something else. Almost wept to shit. Well, whatever. So when Solomon's man found me near a decade later, I did not receive him well. I told him that I was an old man done. A blade turned to rust. I told him that my name would be long forgotten in the world above. He said that was precisely why they wanted me. <clears throat> I would report directly to Marshal Richard Heels, known to many as Richard the Liar. I would leave at first light, and I would speak of it to no one, or I'd be trialed as a deserter. It was quite clear to me that this was a dark thing I would be doing. The sort of cloak and dagger operation that my people would only hear about after all was done, and a suitable story been conjured to explain it. But I did my duty, as I ever have. I'm literally just watching the video of myself do this, so I'm sorry if I miss stuff. So it looks like they know about as much as we do. Whatever the reason behind this mess. I don't remember why I did. Horace seems like a cool guy. Got caught up in some shitty stuff. That's, I think that's what I was talking about. It's apparently important enough for this Solomon fellow to bypass every protocol in the book. If I could only get my hands on him, maybe I could beat out some real answers. Do you think those mages know more than they're letting on? Magnus and Eerie? It's hard to say. One's a thug, the other's a sociopath. The Uther sees through Eerie's bullshit. What was she doing in Foray anyway? You think they've been spying on us? It seems entirely possible. Perhaps you should confront her about it. I don't know if that's a good idea. Seems She seems to like me, but I'm pretty sure that's a ploy. I'd rather go through the bodyguard. Shall I fetch him then? Bring them both. Rather jump through her hoops than avoid to avoid suspicion, as you say. You further prove your cunning with the passing of each day, Uther. I feel you will make for a good regent. Please don't. Very well. Thank you again. You came here to deliver a message, and we dragged you into a bloody massacre. Come on, Tim. There we go. Don't be ridiculous, my lord Uther. It is our kinsmen who caused the offense, and we who should be apologetic. I don't know if I'd go that far. Shush. Then may we all be contrite. Might I offer you our camp to recover before we get to business? There's no need, my lord, I assure you. She's usually rejuvenated after a good slaughter. Must I send you away? No, mistress, it won't happen again. Very good. Proceed as you will, then. In short, my lord, I am here on behalf of our government to plead forgiveness for this whole mess. As you may have gathered, this army was not assembled by the will of the crown, and its objective is, in fact, entirely unclear to us. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty, pretty political shit that's going on here. What am I doing? What am I talking about? Shit, I don't know. Ugh. <sighs> Sorry. Investigation into the matter is ongoing, and should the Archduke be found, he will be explaining his motives from the floor of a deep, dark cell. Entirely unclear. This is the Etrurian Magic Bureau we're speaking of. As I hear it, your scryers can, and do, watch what Duke Ulrich is served for supper each evening. Duck Ulrich. He's a duck. Well, yes, but you must understand that the Archduke is as well-connected as he is wealthy. His resources rival those of his two partners combined, which is a truly terrifying thing. 
Really now, my lovely Rose, do you expect me to believe you know nothing at all? I beg you, my lord, please don't see speak in such tones. It's so distracting. I have other charms I've yet to unleash. Oh, very well. There is evidence that suggests Solomon has found something in Burn. Something that will <clears throat> obsolete warfare as it is known. Puzzling. What could they have found in Burn? Could that be the thing that Tristan is also looking for? Hassar says, dot, dot, dot. Lady Madeline. Well, so much for surprising you. You really are quite good at what you do, aren't you? I wouldn't say that. No? What would you say, then? I am hired to gather information and seek out what is hidden, and that is what I do. Performing a promised job is grounds for adequacy, not excellence. But surely your work is dangerous. You must admit that you must be cunning and skilled to have survived this long. I am not paid enough to die, milady. Oh, here I am, stunned that you're giving me more than two words, and you crack a joke. Where have you been hiding? Usually a furlong ahead of the formation. Oh, you are just darling. Come, you must accompany me down to the river. Damn, she's going for it. She didn't give a shit. I must object, milady. Ah, uh, here we go. Sir Eagler, why ever would you say that? Today we diverted but the tip of the spear. The enemy will be nearby, and in strength. I cannot abide you leaving the safety of our camp. He does have a point. Then we will just have to find some way to entertain ourselves here. Have you ever played kingdoms, Hussar? I am sure Hussar has duties to attend to. There remain but a few hours of daylight, and we have no idea what state the enemy is in. Colorado. I remember making a states, United States joke. If I were a more suspicious person, I would think you were trying to keep us apart. Then I must be thankful that you are not suspicious in nature. Very well. I shall retire, but I expect you to visit me at first light tomorrow, Hussar. Is that understood? It is. Sleep safe, Lady Madeline. Plainsman? Sir. There's tension between the plainsman and the nobles. Whoa. How long have you been watching? What, you don't know? Wow. I knew you were infatuated with her, but I didn't realize she outright blinded you. Damn. Fine. I don't understand what you could possibly see in a silk-stocking bitch like her, but you're a grown man. Just don't let it affect your work, okay? You have nothing to fear. Hope you're right, Hussar. We depend on you. I wonder if Sybil is anything like Eliza. I wonder if they've got... Oh man, I hope they meet up in Act 2. That would be a fun bit of dialogue, I bet. I hope, I hope there is entwining path next time. Uther cradles his wounds in his makeshift war room, converted from a local farmstead. The maps that Marcus lays out for him are but a meaningless blur. They're significant lost in the riot of his inner thoughts. They had won their first real victory against the invaders, one that couldn't be ignored. But that could only mean retaliation was on its way. And so Hussar kept vigil over the border. Eagler slept in his armor, and Harkin was given forms to practice. But in Uther's mind, it all amounted to little. There we go. His gang of misfits was like a small dog biting at Richard's ankles, and the Etrurians had backed down only due to shock. When they inevitably came, it would be in droves, and no traps or terrain or luck would be of help. How many could they stop in the end? Twenty? Sixty? Two hundred? Not enough, to be sure. His only option was to fight dirty. He needed to throw the invaders off balance and keep them on the back foot until he was either given a miracle or laid out cold. And for what? The motives of this elusive great general and his co-conspirators were unknown to all but themselves. Uh, a little shaky in that one. but Oh shit, gotta remember this guy's voice. Marshal, sir. Sir Horace, your men have been returning in small groups for the last hour or so. There don't appear to be many left. Sir Horace, I've been hearing the strangest rumor. The men are saying... Indeed, we suffered a sound defeat. I have no glory to share but for living to see another sun. Then why return? You have your orders, sir. A battle to win. Until it is done, you have no business here. Peace, Master Caffel. Think, Sir Horace may bring intelligence. Aye, an intelligence worth abandoning a sinking boat. 
You might like to know who I crossed today. Speak. Lord Uther of Austria. Lord Uther, the Baron of Redgrove? Lord Uther, the heir of the Lycian League? The very same. And you... took flight to tell me about it, abandoning him to scurry away into the shadows and out of our grasp. You traitor! <laughs> Listen up, all of you. We are on a holy mission. The fate of all Alib's peoples are in our hands. <clears throat> Excuse me. There can be no air, no quarter, no hesitation. One slip, no matter how small, and the Burnites will have us all roasting in the underworld with our families frying right there beside us. Are we clear? Get Uriel down there as soon as possible. We are done waiting for the Lycians to come to their senses. It is time to act. I offer my apologies for the inconvenience, Mayor. State business is all. I don't mind over much, so long as you don't interfere with the harvest. Make yourselves comfortable. It is a small settlement. I'm surprised to learn there's an official mayoral posting here. Ain't none, sir. It's just what my ancestor called himself when he settled here. That seems deceitful. Suppose so. It means little to me. Thank you for your hospitality, Bart. Set the watches and assign beds for everyone. We may be here for some time, so we must entrench ourselves. Make the area our base of operations. Indeed, having time to rest and recover is vital to keep a force healthy and strong. If I may suggest that we arrange a sparring schedule for the young ones, every hour of practice will make a large difference. Fine with me. I'm going to find a place to hold command meetings. Meet with you again in an hour. As you say. This will be a last patrol for the day, won't it? Hmm. I would think you would be full of cheer for the end of another hard day's work. Does anything excite you, Hussar? I've seen you leap your horse from clifftops, weave beautiful baskets, recount your adventures at the fire, but you seldom seem to enjoy any of it. That's cruel of you to say, milady. Is it? Your brow didn't so much as crease when I said it. I'm only teasing. Come, tell me of your passions. Hmm, I do like to ride, but it is difficult to enjoy when my friends are in danger. When I am scouting for the enemy or riding in battle, I am full of tension and fear. When I am on open fields, making a good pace with nothing on my mind, that is a different thing. Yes, yes, I am the very same way. When Walnut gives it his all and my heart sets to pounding, I feel ever so alive. The weaving, too, is pleasing to me. Yet it is not the doing that is satisfying, but the making of something. When I am done, my fingers aching and all the stubborn knots smoothed out, it is then that I feel joy. Oh, I see. It is like cooking, then. When I am mixing and pouring, I will become cross and shout at my utensils, and when it is on the stove, I will pace and fret. But when it is on the platter, and I have the flowers arranged just so, why, nothing makes me happier. I am fond of cooking as well. When I was young, my mother taught me to collect herbs for medicine, and she showed me which ones were good for this dish or that one. I have tried to stay in practice ever since. You will have to teach me some of your recipes. I would like that. There is a sort of pie that is very dear to my heart. Eh, they get their automatic support level. I like it. It's nice. This is like the fourth cutscene. What do you got yourself into this time, you big idiot? Selling secrets like some kind of... Like a common... I don't remember this guy's voice at all. I also don't remember it in the actual playthrough. So you're not missing a lot. Don't worry. That's why I paused here, just trying to remember his fucking voice. Was it the New Yorker accent? I think it was. The word you're looking for is spy. You, you put me here, you scoundrel. What are you planning to do about it? Why, I'm going to liberate you, of course. It would not go well for me if they found my name involved in this. Good intentioned as my actions were. Oh, thank goodness. I'm out of this bloody business. Mock my words. Them nobles can deliver their own damn letters. I'm sure they'll figure something out. Come quickly now. The good Lord Uther will have need of me very shortly, as sure as Ermine is out of fashion. It seems his enemies are mobilizing. <clears throat> God, this is killing my throat. I'm sorry, guys. I don't want to hear it. I'm done, I tell you. I'm done. Calm yourself, child. I'll have you out and away in a snap. 
All right. That brings us to the end of, of the episode. We get to look at all these cool new options next time on Tim Friend. Uh, I'm sorry there was less less fun talk on this one, but I was just trying to trying to do all the voices and read the dialogue in a prompt way. Uh, I hope it was enjoyable. All right, bye everybody. <laughs> We're Tim Friend.